Good morning everyone and how are you on this somewhat beautiful sunny day in Scotland? Now today I've come to a place called New Lanark Mills and it's the second time I've been here which is very exciting because I now have so much more knowledge about it. Um, so the first time I came here I was pleasantly surprised because my friend who lives in the area took me here for a little fabric trip weekend and it was so beautiful. We went to an exhibit about 20th century textiles. They had some fabrics printed from Picasso, Dahl and of course Matisse, my personal favourite. Now that exhibit was curated by the Fashion and Textiles Museum in London so I had seen it twice. I'm a bit spoiled aren't I? Now it was so impressive because this mill is by far one of the most stunning mills I've ever seen and it's also nested in the heart of this place and it's just so lush, there's so much greenery. I don't know if you can hear it, but you can hear a waterfall in the distance and we're on the River Clyde, which is the river that runs from Glasgow all the way through the countryside here. And you're going to be pleasantly surprised how beautiful the landscape is, how wonderful the waterfall is, and three, how interesting this textile mill is and how important it is to us now. So when I came here for the first time, I didn't know anything about it and I just stood there and going, OMG, this is such an important place. I didn't know why it was going to be such an important place, but it it's my favourite textile mill in the whole of the UK. <laughs> Let's have a little chat about where we are. I've got my notes so we get everything right. Now, New Lanark was a cotton mill and it was established in 1786. Now, one of the men that actually helped establish it invented a machine that they used here and it's one of, it was a groundbreaking machine to use for the textiles industry. It was um, a water-powered cotton spinning machinery. His name was Richard Arkwright. So David Dale, what a great name, he ended up selling his share and the mills to a partnership. Now in that partnership was his son-in-law. Now you might recognize the name, his name was Robert Owen. Now Robert Owen did a lot for this place. Not also did he do a lot for this place, he was one of the men that helped develop the working force that we deal with today. When you think of new Lanark mills, normally it goes hand in hand with Robert Owen. He became a great social reformer. He created a somewhat utopian society here that created a better lifestyle for the people that worked in his mills. His ideas really helped develop the industrial revolution, especially workers' rights. Now, I most recently did a course on Future Learn, which I'll link below, about the textile mills in the UK. And this was one of the case studies. And I'm so pleased that I got to explore more information so hopefully that course is still running at the moment but if not it comes back and forth so do check that out it was totally worth it now around 2,500 people lived at these mills he paid a lot of attention to the children he actually opened up one of the first infant schools in the country and the reason I'm standing here is so you could understand that one room in these houses would house a whole family so you might have 10 people living in a room and that was quite normal and to think about it like two and a half thousand people looking very very small tight-knit community and you can almost imagine children playing out in here can't you i'm currently standing outside robert owen's house not a bad spot i'll give you a bit of a 360. mills in Europe people came from all over to witness these it was clean there was a happy workforce it had excellent housing it was doing really really well for itself Robert Owen showed if you treated your workforce well they would be able to work harder and they would like achieve things for you because you gave them a better lifestyle there was no more child mistreatment there was no more loss of fingers and machinery there was no more unreasonable working hours, unlike some professions that still exist. <laughs> and they actually had time to have breaks, to be fed, to have a cuppa. Now, this mill really helped show there was a better example 
of work laws that could be used throughout the world, not only in the textile mills in the UK. Now, I'm a little bit resentful today because it said on the news it was going to be really chilled weather and I wanted to wear something nice, so I'm wearing a really light long sleeve green top, I'm wearing denim, and I am so hot, but it's really beautiful, and it's not boiling hot, so let's just enjoy it and stop whinging. <laughs> All right, how do I get in? Open daily, my backside it's open daily, let's go find out if we can get in. From memory, we walked across there last time, but I think this is the entry. Right. The bad news is the whole museum and rooftop are closed, which I'm kind of okay with and I understand and I'm so thankful I've been here before. So <laughs> um, I think what I'll do for you guys is just insert lots of photos from the last trip and also include the blog below so you can have a bit more information. But I've ordered myself a coffee and some scones and I'm sitting in the shop and I thought this would be a really good chance to talk about some of the products that they still make in the mill today. Let me get my notes. So in this mill, they actually used to spin cotton. We are in their factory at the moment on what would have been one of the floors for the workers. And they used to spin cotton here. And something that I've discovered through this Future Learn course, which is really interesting, is that cotton came from America. And now when the Civil War started, cotton manufacturing kind of like died down because they couldn't get the cotton from America, which is very interesting. Now, but when I was researching about here, I found out they still um, spin some woolen yarn. And you can buy that wool here, so I think we're gonna have a look and see if anything is fancy for my mum. This might be my scones, hold on. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Oh, that looks delish. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Can you Dennis give me a show? Okay, okay. Thank you. So, I've got some freshly baked scones in front of me and a kappa. So while I'm sipping on this and I'll prep my scones and be controversial about the correct way to do them, I like to do jam then the cream. So, um, they spin wool here now which is great that they're still using it and they're still using the methods that they used to use years ago by using the water to have, um, I do believe I've written it down, they're using renewable energy by using a powered, water-powered turbine, which is a great idea. So it cuts down on energy. As we all know, I love that sort of stuff. And it's still following through with old techniques. This wall here is very coveted, so I'm definitely gonna have to have a look if mum wants some. But what's so special about this wool that I think my Harry Potter friends will love is that this is the same wool that they use to make the jumpers for Mrs. Mrs. Weasley, you get I am so sorry. Dursley's charming Christmas presents, you know, the jumpers with the letters. And I thought that was really cute. So I'm definitely going to have to have a look. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking, enjoy my scones so we don't hear the music, but let me make my scones and then you can all comment below which way you do the scones. <laughs> look, 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 look. We've got R. This must be the wall. Oh, it's so beautiful. That to me is just so Scottish with like little flecks. It's like little heather in the fields. It's nice. Then you've got the little one. The mill we see today has a new lease of life. It fell apart after Robert Owen moved to America to create the town of New Haven to bring his ideals that he started here to another part of the world. And it just got worse and worse and worse. And around the late 20th century, they started to restore this place. And now people live here 
I've seen people with beautiful gardens. It also has a youth hostel here. Not a bad cafe whatsoever. And not to mention, the hotel here has a pool. And yes, mum, we will be coming here. Now, I also wanted to discuss some of the points that I hadn't discussed earlier. Did you know that children at this mill started working from the age of 10 and that was considered late. So they would go up to school until they were 10 years old and then start working in the factory. And they would do jobs because they were so small. The jobs that they would do was crawl underneath machinery to get the cotton that had fallen off. And if they do, didn't do this in a certain time, they couldn't, um, you know, you know, because the machine moves real fast. So they had to be really, really on the nimble. And as the years went on, you started to learn new trade and you ended up, you know, working as a weaver or a spinner. And there were lots of different jobs. Like there was masculine jobs, child jobs, and female jobs. The females did a lot. It's amazing how much women did in the mills. And they were really well sought out of because they were really up on the food chain these women because if they were a weaver or a spinner they were creating some beautiful things so their skill was really needed and they were very respected in the community um, there was a lot of um, gentlemen may I say that um, weren't very pleasant and they were the foremen and they were aggressive but it did happen here but not as bad as some of the other places where it's just atrocious and you can only imagine what some gentlemen did two children and others. I will not discuss it on this medium because we're trying to keep it a little bit PG. But have a look at the future learn link below and if not do research further because if you don't come from this background and have an understanding of it it's really worth looking into because you have no idea what it was like. It was so hard to work in these mills. They were just slogging it. The hours were so long, like an average working hour for a child was 10 hours. Can you imagine what other people were doing? But at least this man, Robert Owen, tried his darndest to make life better here. And as I will say further along in the video, you can get a sense of that life was much better here. It doesn't have a grim, great aura. This feels like a very nice place to have been part of. in the countryside is really doing wonders but it's such a beautiful lush part of nature as I said before this river goes all the way up to Glasgow and really goes down to um, <laughs> this town but it's really like beautiful and all these rocky edges and just the sound like it's so lush so there'll be lots of montages of the waterfalls for sure but what we're walking towards right now is the Falls of Clyde, which is the cherry on the cake of waterfalls in that area. So let's montage that up.
So you can see why this was such a important location for the mills. You've got this huge body of water, um, also lush countryside, and like because of the water, they were able to go so fast in the production. Because the Industrial Revolution was a time where it was really go, 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 go. And then the fact that they created these water-based machinery, so when I say water-based, I mean like the machine ran on water, like to power it up. It made it a really resourceful place. And I can imagine life being really, really nice. Yeah, they would have had one day off a week and they would have had to go to church on that day. But I also can imagine everyone like having strolls in the forest. And that would be really nice. It, there's a sense of it was a nice life here. Unlike when you go to some of the other mills, it's just grim and grey. You're like, oh, this was awkward. You can sense that he really made this place a nice place to live. sharing photos with you guys it's such a passion of mine so I'll put the link below and I'm actually going to be very crazy today and tell you it is the adventures with Diane not Diane my name is Diane anyway until next time I hope you really really enjoy this and I'll see you on the next vlog